I talked in the last episode of having a very weak connection, if if almost no connection to whiteness as an identity of myself, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I hear you that people perceive me that way. And then that comes with certain things. In your ideal world, if you can wave a magic wand about the way things are, would you identify with your color? conversation we've talked about kind of a black way of being and a white way of being but then we also say well maybe that's not no, 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 no. Let, no 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 let's go deep in that um so yes but only on the surface because you pointed it out i think as human beings we're all the same but there is a there is a deliberate there's a there's a deliberate way that white people are presented mm -hmm in such a way that when it's juxtaposed to black people, they're held, they seem to be uh, of a higher standard. Yeah. And, and, and what I it's would not uh, real, it's not real whatsoever, but it is, but that's how images are put out there. Yeah. And I would just say the opposite too, which is what you said, where black people are presented in a certain way that comes yes. from associations. And so that has in some sense become blackified if, I, if that's mm -hmm. even a word right and so then there needs to be sensitivity around how you show up mm -hmm. what you just said though is exactly kind of where i wanted to go we talked about cultural and like ways of showing up and reputation and social acceptance and professional acceptance and i kind of wanted to to take a step back or a step, a step up around the, the the terminologies of black and white more generally um because you talked in the in the last in the commentary on the last the reflections on in the la, on the last episode, you talked about black education, as you put it, right? This idea of like I'm black and I'm proud, and um, James Brown, <laughs> yeah, the, the kind of owning of of the identity. Say it loud. Mm -hmm. Would what is your like if you could wave a magic wand um, and, and I, oh, well, let's step back again and just repeat one other thing you said, which is you've had conversations with your friends about what race you would be if you could choose, mm -hmm. right? And you talked about how that's in a very emotional thing or that general topic of identity is really emotional because you you would still be black because it's important. It, it's, it's helped you become who you are and you're happy about who you are. So. I've even said that with the context between the two of us. I told my best friend, I said, knowing the fullness of our relationship, including all the episodes we filmed for the show, if I had to choose Todd's life or mine, I'd still choose my own. Yeah. And so here's the question, I guess, that I would have around identity, because I talked in the last episode of having a very weak connection, if, if almost no connection to whiteness as an identity of myself, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I hear you that people perceive me that way and then that comes with certain things. In your ideal world, if you can wave a magic wand about the way things are, would you identify with your color? Like, would that even be an identity? Okay, so that's two different things. So you're, the premise, the, the assertion there is that color equals race and that's not necessarily true. Cause there are plenty, cause I get mistaken for all kinds of races all the time. Yeah. Um, so there are plenty of people who look like me that are not of the African diaspora. Yeah. Um, and there are plenty of people who do. So I'll answer the question with, would, if I could wage a wand, wave a wand, would I identify with the black race? For me, I can't answer that question. And it's a bit self-indulgent cause there is just no alternate reality, but to indulge, um, I don't see why I wouldn't because African cultures have been, and I, because I've done the ancestry DNA, um, I know which African cultures I'm approximately a part of, like, you know, approximately. And they're just as splendorous and wonderful and part of world history as anything else. So I wouldn't want to be anything else because I do already come from something great, but so does everyone else in the world. We all come from something great. And I, like, I really love history and I really, 
and bowled over. And I was, I've been literally crying all weekend watching these pride movies because I've been watching pride movies from all over the world, like uh, Germany and Holland and China and everything, you know, and it's just the world's people are so beautiful and they want the same thing. And we all come from something that's wonderful and splendorous, but maybe sometimes for whatever intention got perverted and sold as different than what it really was in its soul and at its core. And that's unfortunate, but that gives us work to do as human beings. We have to find our way back to that splendor and seeing the splendor in one another. So I hear you on connecting with kind of where your heritage came from. I guess my question is specifically around color itself right? Like, why would it not be I come from some part of Africa, right? Why would it be in the ideal world? Why would it be I'm identifying as black, right? Why would it not be I have, this, color, I have this heritage? I have this heritage that I come from, you know, just think about to, to compare it to my example. It's not that I have the strongest Jewish identity related, you know, relative to other people in the Jewish community, but I would certainly be Jewish first before white or um, Californian first. It's funny that you say that. Californian often, even first before. I've often said I'd be gay first before black. Not often. I've had, yeah, I would. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would. But to answer your question, for all of us, if I could wave a wand, then our color shouldn't matter at all. Okay. Like we just be. So if you could wave a wand, so why do you think the motivation is then? behind identifying so if, if the ideal is we don't call ourselves black people white people mm -hmm. or otherwise mm -hmm. brown people other colors that have been used in history mm -hmm. red yellow right um which are not currently owned right um why what then if that's not the ideal what do you think the motivation is behind identifying uh -huh. black? I have an answer for you because it was an easy way for, uh, uh, how would you say, imperialists to segregate people. And so, this, so the, the, the motivation for having to identify around your color came for me, comes out of imperial machinations in the world. So because it's easy for you know, empires to segregate people by color and say, with these people who are this color, do this, with these people that color, do that. Then now when you're trying to reverse the impact of, or the negative impact of having been part of an empire, however you came into that being of being part of the empire, then you, um, you, it's natural to organize yourself in that same way. So it's like your plan of attack essentially is a mirror of what was used to oppress you. Yeah. So what do you think? Let me ask it in a reverse way. I understand that. So there were folks back in the day that separated people based on color. They used it as a justification for domination of some kind. Um, and there's some sort of residual history of that as well, of the way that we see one another. And so that in some way factors into why own yourself as a black person. I'm still trying to understand why that leads to it. Like, what do you think would happen if you didn't identify as black? Well, then how do you collect? I mean, not collective bargain is not the right word, but if you do like, you need strength in numbers. So how do you get rights? How do you triumph over the imperialist or whatever the oppressive, you know, other quote unquote is if you have people who are floating in and out of in and out of the definition, like you strength in numbers gives voice. And yeah. so that's why you have to do it. So for me, like, and we can even, even outside of race being um, uh, gay, one of the conversations that always comes up during pride is coming out. And I always tell gay men, I said, I don't judge, you know, your journey and your path. But for me, it was important to come out to friends and family in the world and employer to set to stand up and be counted. So an analogy, an analog, you know, uh, analogy with my race, it was up to I publicly self-identify as black 
because it's important for me to stand up and be counted. And also within my own, you know, the, the diversity of your own black community to stand up and be counted as the way I show up or I interpret being a black American mm. is for me. Stand up and be counted is important because it does what? Well, number one, it gives you visibility. Mm. And visibility raises awareness, and awareness raises consciousness. I'm not saying awareness equal equates to immediate change, but it raises consciousness. And when our consciousness, when our consciousness is elevated, then it gives us new questions to consider that contribute to our worldview. And when our worldview is challenged, we have a choice. Either we can retreat into what we know, either we challenge it right back, or we can choose to integrate this as a piece of knowledge to build a broader scope in the world for ourselves. So I heard two things of why you think it's important to identify as Black, as, as your race. One is, um, to create some sort of community that can help one another to change the things that affect you organically in the day, right? The and also for, the, for people who aren't Black, because there, there are people, I mean, there, there are people just like being gay who legitimately don't have many interactions with Black people, and they may have questions, notions, etc., yeah. and they may have a not, have a genuine respectful curiosity and mm -hmm. when some when you stand up and be counted it's a way of saying to the world i'm here mm -hmm. and and because this has really happened to me with being gay over the years like where people like you know we're, we're very curious about gay men and how we show up and live our lives etc mm -hmm. and i was always willing to answer those questions but they wouldn't have they wouldn't have had me as a resource had yeah. i not been out yeah. So that was the second thing. So the first thing is kind of the forming of a community that can help one another, inform one another as you and your friends do, mm -hmm. advocate for one another as it relates to the common challenges that you experience mm -hmm. or the common ways in which you want things to change to create more equity and, and whatnot. The second way was being a representative of that group in some way that might inform others in the population, that might change stereotypes Mm -hmm. in the population um and for me that's another reason why it's important for me to be to be fully married to the man i'm with it's another way of standing up and being counted mm -hmm. what would you say if someone said to you why not consider yourself a human first an american first uh I respect hey. that, but I, I do, I respect that, but that is not as politically impactful as taking the label that other people have put upon me and turning it into, what's the month? A source of pride. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called pride. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called pride, pride. And I'm proud to be black. I'm proud to be from a working class black community. Even when I'm bringing the tilly tally, <laughs> I'm proud. Um, and I'm proud to be gay. When, when the another man, when, when the black community is diverse, right? And we've talked about that before. There's different ways of showing up as a black person. There are different ideas within uh, the black community. What does it then mean to be? proud of being black right like what are the, what is the pride about if so what is jewish pride about for you see i don't really resonate with <laughs> i mean i'm proud with that verbiage jewish pride yeah i don't and and, mm -hmm. and then when, when we talked about the idea of white pride like I can't encapsulate anything as being white. There are people who try to do that, right? There are people who try to say these technologies and these social systems, democracy and whatnot, you know, were you know spawned can, by can, white by white dominated populations. We should be proud of that, right? There's people who try to do that, um, yes. and you know, we can go into why that's, you know, I can answer your unwarranted question. sentiment, but. There's nothing that I can pinpoint, just to finish this thought, there's nothing that I can pinpoint. Um, and there are people who are who are proud about being Jewish and that and they, you know, define certain things as being Jewish to be proud about. 
I guess I always, it, it's, it's, here's, here's where I, here's where I come from. And then, and then I'd like to hear what, what your thoughts are as it relates to being black and feeling proud. If someone were to put me into two communities, they would be white and Jewish, right? <clears throat> Both of those communities, white certainly, and Jewish in its own way, have had elements of their teachings in certain circles that were based on exclusivity, mm -hmm. right? Whites, we kind of clearly know about with regard to white supremacy. Jews with regard to who the chosen people are when it comes to spiritual, the spiritual mm -hmm. leaders, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I'm always hesitant around the idea of pride related to race and ethnicity because whatever, it, it seems to me that whatever one would be proud of would also be elements of other races and ethnicities. And so why are we just not proud uh, in the expressions of our humanity that we, that we show in the world? Like I'm you're proud, sweet. you're I'm sweet proud. Because we're not there yet. <laughs> no, 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 you, you, you real sweet. I was a lucky woman, you a real sweet dude. No, explain <laughs> to me though, yet. explain to me why. Human, we, human consciousness isn't there yet. But you would will, like that to be the case. Oh, but you feel was. like being proud of being black and expressing that shows people hey that it's not we're not these mm -hmm. okay and um and attributing it to yourself as a black person is saying a black person can be this way mm -hmm. different than what your stereotypes are is that you want it to be okay so the idea is attributing it to being black to push against the ways in which blacks are prejudiced discriminated against stereotyped and so for me for me personally, when it, what my definition of Black pride, it's so interesting that Juneteenth is during pride. And, and that's not lost on many, many, many of us who are Black and gay. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, Black pride, I'll tell you a, a slight story. So I have always loved the song Proud Mary. And I know it's originated with CCR. But of course, everyone knows Tina's version, right? And I love Tina Turner. And I often sing her when I get drunk. <laughs> but... Um, you know, the lyrics of that song, especially when you're talking about the big wheel keeps on turning and proud Mary keeps on burning, leaving a job in the city and the way the forest, with, in my opinion, with which Tina sings that song speaks to an intrepidness in the human spirit. Right. And that's one thing that black people have had to try to do and gay people, too, if you really want to point it out, soldier on. So for me, black pride is, like I said, doing what you can to just soldier on. And even that soldiering may be minute. So you may only have to take a baby step today, but you could run a mile tomorrow. And as long as you just have that belief and you just have that spirit at your core, you will be all right. And I've seen that in my family. I've seen that with my grandparents, with my family, you know, with my parents, you know, you, you, to me, that's what black pride is, is that, that intrepidness of spirit. And I know other races have that and other races have been through many atrocities. I don't want to, I don't want to take away from that, Yeah. but I'm not a part of those races. I'm part of me. And when it, you ask me, why are you proud to be black? And I said, it's because of that spirit. It's yeah. because woo, it's so many times, so many times when we could have just, you know, jumped into the river, we stayed on the boat yeah. and we kept rolling on the river to use the, pro yeah. the proud Mary analogy. Why do you think your dad wanted you and your siblings to what what was it that he had you say i'm black and i say it loud i'm black and i'm black and i'm proud is that well that happened yes so to give you a bit of context i was older so i had a disconnected relationship with my father and i remember that particular experience when i was older like in teen years uh and sitting around with my younger siblings and i was there for a visit you know you go visit your dad when your parents are separated uh for him i can't speak to his motivation but what he communicated to me in his lifetime, he's now deceased, communicated to me in his lifetime that it was important for us to have a sense of, of, of gravity, of not only what we've been through, but also what we're capable of. And, and, no, one, that, and no one can take any of that away from you. So no matter how a white person treats you or says, says anything to you or whatever, like no one can take the very essence of you away. 
And the very essence of you, is at least in the physical manifestation of yourself, is that you are Black. Many people are going to look at you and they're going to see a quote unquote Black person, African American, whatever. And with that, that's a part of the other the message from him, they're going to bring all sorts of opinions and expectations of you. And yep. it, what you have to say, irrespective of all of those things, is that I'm the best of myself and I'm proud of it. So yep. call me whatever, you know, negative thing you want, but I'm the best of myself and I'm proud of it. And also no one should be not proud of their journey. And part of their journey, part of your journey as a black person is being black and at least from a peripheral perspective, having to endure some of the things that black people endured. I mean, Jim Crow laws applied to everybody who was black. Like you were, whether, whether you wanted to be a part of it or not, you were a part of it. If you looked like you were part of the African diaspora. Yeah. Yeah, that's all making sense. So you're you're perceived in a certain way. You um, have, there's associations that come along with defining you, others defining you as a black person. And so I hear four things now around this. One is the collective part of it, the building of community, like we're in it together. Um, and the way to define the way you are together is, you know, with different complexions, of course, being black. Um, second is um, a sense of resilience that you mentioned, which is like kind of remembering the challenges you've been through and being proud of the way those challenges are taken on. And then the third and fourth are kind of education processes. One is education. It sounds like almost educating yourself. Like you're going to have so many people throw negative associations your way. You remember who you are. You remember. Yes. Your, yes. You remember you're all these positive things, mm -hmm. not the things they try to tell you you are. And then yes. there's the, the last one, which is representing those positive things and educating others out of yes. their stereotypes. Yeah. All of that completely makes sense. You know, I don't I don't really it's hard for me to go there necessarily um, for the reasons I told you. But at the same time, I do I do understand it. I mean, over six million Jews were were killed in the mm -hmm. Holocaust. And so the way that that they as a community owning that heritage, because it's the heritage based on which they were persecuted <clears throat> and saying, we persisted, like, look, we, we rose again, right? In the sense of, you know, succeeding and aspiring and surviving. Um, in, in fact, we, you know, started, a, you know, a, a state for ourselves. Like there's ways in which we pushed back from this. Mm -hmm and survived and thrived. And so, you know, it's hard for me in some sense to identify that exclusively. And I know it doesn't have to be exclusive, but sometimes it feels exclusive for me to say that's something for Jews to be proud of because I feel like it's something for a lot of people to be proud of who have hit challenges. Yeah. But the truth is, you know, as you stated, people were persecuted because of the fact they were Jewish. And so the pride is in pushing back against that that force right um and so i guess i i guess i guess you yeah i i, I guess i can i can own that a little bit more and i and i certainly understand it more i mean i felt it very much with my it's pride month todd it's pride it's <laughs> pride you it's being pride in all of the dimensions of your life not only yeah. your race your sexual orientation your yeah. you know pride yeah Thank you for watching this episode of Healing Race and stay with us for a scene from our next video. If you want to see more conversations like the one you just watched, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with friends and family, and like and comment on the video below. If you'd like to be a guest on one of our episodes and have an open, real conversation about race, email us at guests at healingraceshow.com. And if there are topics you think we should cover, we'd love to hear them. So please email your ideas to topics at healingraceshow.com. As always, thanks for your support. We look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Now, here's a scene from our next Healing Race. You talk a lot about this idea of the psychology of ownership. What, how do you think that materializes across the white population? So okay. let's, let's, let's ask a really specific question. <laughs> Do you, yes, exactly. do a you justification, think, a justification. You think I carry around a feeling of ownership over black people.
To watch the rest of that episode, go ahead and click the video below me. To see a different compelling Healing Race episode, you can click the video below me. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.